Hello guys, Assalamualaikum and good evening. So today we are going to talk about a little bit about electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. So which is EIS, Basics of Electrochemical Impedance Spectroscopy. You can go to the gamery.com to know the basic about it. So normally we are talking about resistance. A normal resistance we are studying in primary and secondary school is about resistant equal to voltage divided by current so that's the most basic thing but by having a complicated system we can't using this simple ohm law we are using impedance so by having the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy it is easy to study the behavior so you can see also the other website uh, palmsense.com also saying a little bit basic about electrochemical impedance spectroscopy so you can find and study a little bit basic about it so today I'm going to focus on the Dyson star solar cell in solar cell we are using EIS electrochemical impedance spectroscopy to measure the charge transfer resistance between the interface because in the Dyson Stein solar cell, we have um, normally three interface, but basically the from the graph here you can see two interface here at low frequency, this or at high frequency, this is the interface of counter electrode electrolyte interface, and at low frequency is the interface of TiO2 dye electrolyte interface is depend on the system if it's all about the supercapacitor the interface is quite different and you can see from the solar cell there is no wabak wabak is a straight line we don't have wabak just have a semicircle so first before we go into the graph we go into basic when you are going to plot or run the experiment so first we go to the uh, solution preparation so to run the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy you must have a potential stat with um, two electrode system or three electrode system normally in Dyson star solar cell we are using two electrode system uh, by sandwiching the counter electrode and the photo anode and injecting the electrolyte in the middle so you can get a complete uh, TSSE device so first uh, what you're going to do is the electrolyte itself for DSSC is the iodolite so if you are using iodolite for your photovoltaic performance you can use the same for the impedance measurement so first what you're going to do is just set the potential this is OCP open circuit potential you can uh, refer uh, to the journal how they use so normally they are using 0 0.8 volt and the important thing is about FRA measurement potential static so this is if you are using NOVA software so you can use for FRA measurement potential static the only thing that you need to uh, change is the first apply frequency so you want to scan from what frequency to what frequency here we are scan about 1000 frequency to 0 0.1 frequency in the unit of Hertz so the frequency set is a frequency per ticket amplitude is um, 0 0.01 volt so we are using a single signs and the estimated uh, duration is 5 minutes so you can change actually so for example you want 100,000 to very small 0 0.01 so you can see the estimated uh, time will change you can see change to 20 minutes when you change the uh, range of the frequency so you can click just on this 0 0.1 so it will take for 5 minutes then you just click OK everything is set up just click start so when you click start then everything is OK you can run your experiment and you get your result for example your result is like this only have one semicircle so the other video I already um, tell you how to fit the circuit, how to get the value and so on, how to get the charge transfer resistance, the series resistance and so on. So we move to the how to analyze the data. 
So when we got the data like this, this is obviously two Nyquist plot. So when we typically talk about solar energy, which is disensitized solar cell, normally people will get a two semicircle. The semicircle at high frequency here is a semicircle at counter electron electrolyte interface. At low frequency here is the frequency semicircle charge transfer resistant at TiO2 di electrolyte interface. So first we are talking about X and Y. So by having a Nyquist clock, the X axis is the um, real impedance. We are talking about real impedance. The unit is ohm per centimeter square real impedance. So we have imaginary impedance in the y axis, also ohm centimeter square the unit. So um, here from the Nyquist plot, you can know the charge transfer resistance. These semicircles um, represent the charge transfer resistance, means that um, the resistance of the electron to pass through the interface here because solar cell uh, if you are studying the general of solar cell they have four important interface uh, to pass through first of all the dye to pass through to the TiO2 dye electrolyte interface then to pass through to the counter electrolyte ele interface and between the electrolyte itself they got the interface as you can see here very small one is between the electrolyte itself the interface in the electrolyte so from the Nyquist plot the important thing that you can abstract is the first one is the RS this is the RS the resistance that intercept with the y-axis is the series resistance this is the RS and also charge transfer resistance in this case we have two one RCT and RCT2 so we have two RCT so you get the RS and also RCT that the most basic thing that uh, people sort of to find out from the impedance analysis from the Nyquist plot so how to get the value to get the value you can go from the software from the software you can go you can go to right click here add analysis electrochemical circuit fit and just click three line okay you can adjust make it until all the circle is fit but this is not fit I just uh, roughly show you then after that you can uh, read here you can read the value the here the RPR is the RS value the RPR is RCT value RS is the RS value Okay, it's quite simple but you can practice it okay that's for Nyquist plot two important things that you're going to come up with is about the charge transfer resistance and series resistance so the only the other thing about the impedance is you get the boot plot analysis okay boot plot analysis is plot by the x axis is frequency or log frequency and the y axis is negative phase <coughs> minus phase so from the board plot analysis it's important if you are studying disensitized solar cell it's important to study the board plot also the board plot is a complement analysis that you get when you run the impedance eis <coughs> so from the board plot you can you must find the maximum frequency f max this is the maximum frequency you can get it by find the maximum maximum frequency you can see the maximum this is the maximum the highest or the maximum frequency okay as you can see when you get the maximum value so what happened just insert the formula the formula is equal to electron lifetime equal to 1 over 2 pi f max so when we you are using this formula you can get the electron lifetime so you can measure is it the electron lifetime longer in your device or your electron lifetime is slower so reported in literature by having a longer electron lifetime it can prevent recombination effect so you can you must find a reason why why a longer electron lifetime 
will prevent a recombination effect that a task for all of you to find out so in another video i will ask i will tell you how so so from impedance itself in dssc i recap back what we talk about we are talking about we get the nyquist plot and also board plot both analysis is important to study the behavior of the electron through when the electron travel throughout the dssc process to complete the dssc process so we can study how how much the resistance the electron must pass through at this interface um, is it the lifetime of the electron longer or not and so on so by having using a nova you can run the experiment plotting and also you can also discuss your um, analysis by having these two category under the impedance spectroscopy okay i think that's all for me so you can go to the research gate to know about a little bit what is the difference between imagery ordinary impedance and real impedance so a little bit info i'm going to add because um, they are saying that when we are talking about imaginary impedance it's all about capacitance when we are talking about um, real impedance it's all about the it's all about when real is all about the resistance so they are measuring capacitance and resistance so a lot of answer you can find out from the research gate and a basic you can go to the gamry.com and also uh, palmsand.com and also another journal i think that's all a simple about the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy so thank you for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe